Welcome back. Let's continue that conversation now on uh, the recent Supreme Court ruling on local government autonomy. I'm now being joined on the program by a former chairman of Ijebu East local government area in Ogun State. Uh, that's uh, Wali Adedayo, who, of course, uh, joins us from Ijebu. Uh, thank you very much, um, Wali, for joining us on the program. Uh, uh, first off, let, let me get your thoughts on this uh, ruling by the Supreme Court. Something that they properly manage, it is a vehicle to developing the grassroots. A lot of the noise that our people are making right now, made, in fact, up to 90% of it will go down if the local governments are working properly. And the only thing that can make them work properly is if there are funds for them to work. If they get funds, then the people at the grassroots they will feel it. And the people at the grassroots, they are in the majority. It's the local government that controls, it's like the local government that controls the country because all the people who are shouting about the big power and so on, they live in one local government or the other. If the local government should do what is necessary at their level, end of story. A lot of these uh, agitations will come down. That's it. It will affect food. It will affect security. It will affect so many other things. But the funding, funds needs to be there. If the funds are not there, then there's nothing any local government can do. But once the funds are there, then it will positively affect the, the country. That's it. We, 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 we know as, uh, as a local government chairman, you had, you had your own issues with uh, the, the, the state government. And uh, of course, I understand that issue is still in court uh, as we speak. But you, you must be wishing that uh, th this kind of ruling had come even long before now, probably before this whole problem you had with the state government uh, started. No, my brother, the, the challenge I believe that we have, I won't call it a problem, it's a challenge that we have, is that we have governors who don't have conscience. If you have conscience, for God's sake, it should prick your conscience that the people you are governing, they have to be okay. And one of the major ways to be okay is for the local governments in your states to be working effectively. If the local governments are not working, then what are you a governor for? Why did you go there? Why did you go there? Each of us, I mean, local government chairman, by whatever we got there, at least you campaign that you are going to do this, you are going to do mm. that. How will you do that if the funds to do it is not available? For instance, primary schools are under local government. Primary health care centers and so on are under local government. How many of us can repair primary schools now? How many of us can take charge of health centers? Because the funds are not just there. Apart from that, there is something I expect that they will even, because some of us will expect that, the federal government will even go further than this. Some of the functions of the local government are stipulated by the constitution have been mm. attacked by the state. The local governments are supposed to be collecting tenement rates in all the states of the federation. It is not the business of state government to be collecting tenement rates, but they roll the thing through the House of Assembly. It is the state government who are collecting tenement rates now. If you look at motor parks, check the constitution. It's under the duration of the local government. All these transport units and so nobody is paying any money to local government. And that is where local government ought to be generating funds from. But let's even start from the federation account. If these funds can get directly to local government, then maybe the other one will be taking it one step at a time. Mm. This one is a good victory. It's a fantastic one. Now, a fantastic uh, one. yeah, so, so let, let me ask you, uh, when you were local government chairman, uh, chairman now, d does it mean money wasn't coming to you directly? It wasn't coming to your local government directly or, or, or what? See, what happens I, I mean, from, from the Every Jack, from the Jack account. Call, you know, at the federal level, you have FAC, F-A-A-C. At the state level, you have what you call JAC, J-A-A-C, Joint Accounts Allocation Committee. It's held monthly. It's supposed to be held between the chairman of the local government, commissioner for finance, and commissioner for local government. By the time you go to these meetings, they will just bring out for you a summary of what the money has been used for. You don't have access to a dime of that money. A dime, you don't have access to it. They will just give you a summary in a sheet. And meanwhile, I'm talking specifically about the concept now. Mm. By the time you are going for that meeting, immediately you enter the meeting venue, there is a, a notebook like the register of those who attend the meeting. You sign right at the door. But the, the game is that at the end of the meeting, that same thing you sign for attendance purpose, that is what they will attach to the resolution for the meeting that a jack had been held and all the chairmen agreed with the way the funds were shared. Meanwhile, you were not there when they were sharing the funds. The funds, you not even get your account. You don't have access to the funds. 
It is the state that pays salaries. Salaries are paid directly by them. Allowances and everything is paid directly by them. They are the one managing the funds. It's not the local government. So the, local so the question, government don't man, manage a dime so, out of federal allocation. So, so the and question is, what, what then do local government chairmen do? What, what do the local government executive do? No, that's precisely what I'm saying. And that's what I've been saying since. You don't manage a dime out of federal allocation in Ogun State. You don't, not one dime. You don't manage it. You don't see the money. It's the state that handles everything. The each jack meeting, the jack meeting is held regularly. But the thing is, it is the way the money has been spent that it will just give you like a, it's like you're having a meeting, I said minutes of last meeting. That's what they'll bring for you. That uh, we we'll use this one to pay salary, we we'll use this one to pay allowances, we've we'll given this one to the others, we've we'll given this one to this blah 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 blah. And in some cases, in fact, in a lot of cases, you see balances. So my own question is time I attend the meeting is that okay. Let's say you have helped us to pay the salary, you've given to the others and so on. But what about this balance remaining? Where does it go to? Hmm. Where does it go to? It doesn't come to the local government. So, I mean, what is it that we are doing here then? Of course, normally they will, they will not answer. N now, this, they this they latest ruling, uh, this yes, this latest ruling now, um, some people have said, needs to go, uh, you know, for, 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 for a complete emancipation of the local government uh, system in this country, that the, the process through which local government chairmen are elected needs to, uh, be, needs to be dealt with. Uh, and and a, a good example is that, um, you know, that the powers to conduct local government elections should be taken away from the governors or the state governments now and given to the Independent Electoral Commission. Uh, do, do you think that will make another significant difference in ensuring that local government areas in this country have full and complete autonomy? See, so what I would do, if INEC is going to conduct the election, the first effect of that is that it is going to checkmate the issue of Godfatherism, which usually comes to the governor. Because if the governor doesn't approve your name, you can't emerge as a candidate, as a chairmanship candidate for any local government election. So why I'm saying that if it is INEC that is going to conduct election, fine. A lot of people still complain about INEC and so on. But the fact is that you discover that INEC will still conduct a credible election mm. far, far better than any state uh, independent electoral commission will conduct. So the thing is, if a state should produce chairmen who are unpopular, chairmen who the uh, electorates know are not credible, certainly they will lose. So you can imagine a party control in a state now, and you have about uh, 20 local government, and 18 of such chairmen, I mean, did not win election. 18 of your candidates did not win out of 20. Hmm. So that means you sit up next time, or maybe if you are smart enough, you see the signal coming, then you allow internal democracy in your party. You don't dictate. You understand? Mm. The, if I need to conduct the elections, I personally feel it will encourage the process of internal democracy in each of the political parties. Mm. It is not as if they will go and write names of people who should contest. Party members will decide who should go forward to go and contest elections. That's my own take about the INEC. And at the same time, too, for me, it means that credible people will now come into the local government system. You understand? Because most of those who are there now, whether councillors or chairmen, you discover that on the whole, majority of them, they don't even know what governance is all about. They are just waiting for instruction from the governor or from somebody close to the governor to tell them what to do. They don't know jack about what they are doing or what they are supposed to do. But if I now conduct the election, it will make not just the process more credible, but the people coming into the system, it will bring in more credible people into the system. That's my own take about it. Let, let, let me ask you this question, because some people have raised that fears that despite this ruling, because uh, this local government chairman are, are actually, you know, whether we like it or not, even in places where you have election, uh, they, they're actually like more like appointees of the governors, that the governors will still look for a way around this, this new development now to, to ensure that the money still gets back to them. Uh, how, how do you think that can happen? How, how would you react to that fear? Well, that, that can happen. But the fact is that we are 20 here in Ogun State. I'm not a saint myself. I have my own uh, shortcomings. I think all saints are in heaven. That is what I always say. But the fact is that you discover that we have 724 local governments in Nigeria. There is no way that one or two or three or even five of those local governments in each state 
will not disagree with that kind of arrangement. arrangement. They will disagree definitely with that kind of arrangement. And when that noise comes out, the governor will have to step back. If not, he knows that he's headed for jail. That's just it. It's not that it can't happen, but definitely everybody will not sleep and face the same direction. That's my belief about that. Finally, what what do you? It, it's good that these funds um, these funds are coming directly to the local government areas, and uh, that the local government chairman, the, the local can, the local council legislature now will have to sit up and all of that. But how can people also ensure that you know these funds are better utilized for for their benefits and that they are used for what uh, they are meant? My brother, the first steps to that is for are people on the streets out there. Those of them claim they don't like politics, uh, politics is dirty, they don't want to get involved, blah, blah, blah. Mm. If you don't get involved, it is your inferiors who will rule over you. It is your inferiors who will decide your way of life. It is your inferiors who will decide whether you have drainage on your street, whether you have roads or not. We need a lot of credible people to come into the system. We need people of substance to come into, uh, substance not in terms of money, in terms of what is upstairs. So that money is available now, this is the project we need to do, or these are the things we need to sort out. We need such people. This is the time for such people to come in now because there's an opportunity now for such. Because a lot of people, they are in the urban areas. They forgot about their hometown, they forget about where they come from. And meanwhile, they are the biggest complainants mm -hmm. when it comes to things like this. It is time for everybody to go back home and hold your own government by yourself. This is the time. All those who are making noise about uh, government not doing this well, government not doing that well, this is the time for them to go back home. Maybe it is where you live or something, but for God's sake, get involved with the system. You may not necessarily contest for election, but support those who you believe are credible, who can do something, who can make positive changes in your society. Because right now in Nigeria, there's a lot of noise about Mr. President. Mr. President is not doing this. Mr. President is not doing that. If the local government should work as it should mm. normally the majority of this shouting will go down i have no doubt about it if you are talking about food if you are talking about security if you are talking about anything it starts at the local government level if the local governments are functional you have credible people there people who have this ones obvious for god's sake we will have a lot of things with ease that's just it so for me our people should go not just go into politics but seek elective positions so that it is not people who don't know their right from their left that will be in the elected position ruling over you that has a first class brain. That's just my and, opinion. And, and, do, and do you think this will galvanize um, the legislature at the local uh, local government level? Because for, for a long time now, councillors are just there. You know, that, that arm of that arm of uh, that arm yourself, would be like brother, dead. So do you think this you could change yourself. things what in terms of lawmaking of at, at the local level? About? Yes, what is the background of these councillors we are talking about? Where are they coming from? What do they have here? Mm. We need quality people at that level. That's what I'm saying. That people should come on board, quality persons should come on board, push people who you know can do the job forward. Because, I mean, I don't want to be mentioning all these artisan professions. You have a lot of them who are artisans. Ordinarily, people who don't know their right from their left. They don't even know anything about process of governance and things like that. And they are the position Or they push themselves there. And you expect them to check others. They, have they checked themselves? Do they even know why they are there? For some, I've seen it. In my own first experience. You can imagine a councillor that, well, I need to achieve it. Because for some councillors, it's like, if I don't build the house, I don't buy a car, I've not achieved anything. That is what they call achievement. But in terms of take home for their people, what have you done for your constituency? Where you come from? They're not bothered. It's just personal achievement. That is what they call achievement. So that's why I'm saying that if you are talking about councillors not being able to check this or that, what caliber of councillors are you talking about? Mm. Who are they? Where are they coming from? What's their background? So we need to change that narrative. We need a lot of people to come in, quality people. I mean, you can imagine somebody who's been involved in journalism right from school and so on, going into such a area that person will do well definitely or somebody that in your street you hold a position in your city and the city people there they know you very well for this or that those are the kind of people who should come in landlord tenant association people who have been doing very well there who have been helping their different areas this is the time to bring them on board let them come in as councillors let them come in as chairman 
Because if you check out some CDS, they've done excellently well. I'm talking about community development association. Mm. These are landlords and tenants association all over the place. That's true. Some of them have done very, very well. I'm talking about their escorts. And they have ordinary members too, who always make meaningful contributions during their meetings. Those are the kind of people that the local government needs. They know where the shoe is pinching each local government, and they know what to do. They have the brain. They have the capacity to do it. So those, those are the kind of people we should encourage to go into local governments right now. That's it for me. Ali Adedayo, thank you very much for your time. I, I thank you so very much for honoring our invitation, and thanks a lot for your contribution. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Well, that was Wale Adedayo, who is uh, the former chairman of uh, Ijebu East Local Government Area in Ogun State. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back to continue the conversation on this topic. Stay with us. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? Because when you go into public office, you must be ready to answer to the people. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it, so that you can understand it. Use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.